Praise the Lord, everybody. Ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord this evening? No other place I'd rather be. This is the place I want to be. Amen. Every time these doors are open, every time these doors are open, in Jesus' name. I'm going to go ahead and take up the tithes and the offerings. But before I do, one of the ways that we protect our homes, one of the ways that we rebuke the devourer, is by giving to God. We have the promise. We have that promise. God will protect us. Amen. And we don't leave any doors open when we're obedient to God. When we pay our tithes, we're acting out of obedience to God. It's obedience to God. Come on. Come on. When we give an offering, that's what we're blessed on is the offering. So that's why we give above and beyond. Because we want to get blessed by God. Amen. Come on. It's, it, it, it's, it's like having a delicious dinner, you know. It's like uh, spaghetti and meatballs, right? Uh, and so you get served spaghetti and meatballs, but if you only serve the spaghetti and don't get meatballs, then you miss it on half of the, the wonderful meal that God has for you. It, it's kind of like that with our tithes and offering. It's we give our tithes in an offering to be blessed. The offering is what we're blessed on. Lord, we're so thankful. That thing hates me. I know it does. <laughs> God, we love you, Jesus. We praise you. We give thanks on the I'm so thankful, God. I'm so happy, Jesus. God, I know that you're an awesome, mighty, powerful, loving God who gives back to his children everything they need for them. I pray God a blessing upon the people that are able to give out of obedience and out of above and beyond what they need to so they can be blessed. I pray you pour out that blessing upon yes, them. And, and so much that the storehouse is full, Lord God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. And that devil's rebuked in Jesus' name. Every time we act out of obedience, Father, we do the right thing. You always do the right thing, Father. We're thankful, God. We're thankful. We're thankful. Bless us as we come and give. In Jesus' name, amen.
Massachusetts just for the day because my grandson who's so adorable, he's five, he had grandparent day and we just said that's it, we're going. We got in the car and we went and it was awesome. So we're a little bit fuzzy today but we're okay. So today we want to bring a message to you that is something that has been dear to my heart for a long time. And I've entitled it, Holy Smoke. Holy Smoke. We're gonna start with Exodus chapter three, verse two through five. Thank you for that picture. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am I. And he said, Draw not near hither. Don't come too close. Take off your shoes from off your feet, for the place that you are standing is holy ground. Lord, we ask that you would bless, bless my lips, Lord. Touch my mind, my heart, Lord, and that I would be a vessel that you use for your glory, for your kingdom. God, that you would touch each and every heart, every mind, every ear, and that they would apply it to their lives, Lord. Every one of us would apply it to our lives. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Now, if you listen, you'll understand where I'm going here with this. All right, there's an author named Ronnie Floyd, and... He has, in his book, he says that there are over 400 times that God is being referred to as fire. In every single verse, there's a different meaning. See, fire is a powerful tool. It can either be used for good or evil. It's used to heat our food and our homes. It could be used for light. It can be used to harm people or do other evil deeds. Fire can be started in many different ways from different sources, like friction from two flintstones or sticks, sun to glass through a magnifying glass or, or even a, a bottle of plastic water, a, you know, a plastic water bottle has started fires from the sun going through. It can be started by chemicals with matches or lighters and different chemicals that they use. But the funny thing about fire, it has to be supervised. And if not, it could cause a wildfire that would be out of control and cause much devastation. And if you look up on the, um, 
on the, the screen, Brother Michael has put a picture of a city that's on fire burning. I'm going to explain that in a minute. But often to prevent forest fires from consuming dry brush, as Brother Will knows, the fire department will intentionally light a controlled fire within certain parameters. So the, the brush will already be burned by the time the fire gets to it. I went up to my, my grandparents' camp up in Byron, and most of the woods inside was burnt. And my husband and I were trying to think if they did a control burn or if it had happened. Sometimes lightning will cause a fire. But how many matches does it take to start a fire? Does anybody know? One. One, exactly. And how many does it take to start a bonfire, Dominic? <laughs> how many does it take to start a forest fire? One. Savannah. One. One. Eight. That's right. The picture that is on the screen, I believe, is the Great Chicago Fire. It burned from Sunday, October 8th until early Tuesday, October 10th in 1871. The fire killed up to 300 people and destroyed roughly 3.3 square miles of Chicago, Illinois. It left more than 100,000 residents homeless. That fire was one of the largest U.S. disasters of the 19th century and destroyed much of the city's central business district. That is the city burning. Some witnesses stated that a group of men were gambling inside the barn so that they would not be seen by other people. And the lamp that they were using was accidentally knocked over, which may have started the fire. October 31st, 2007. How many of you are 10 or 9? 9, 10, 11. How many? A bunch of you. Not you, Brother Harry. <laughs> A 10-year-old boy admitted that he accidentally started one of the largest of last week's fire in California. That was in October. Um, the article came out and said this. And it was um, a Southern California wildfire. And he accidentally lit it by playing with matches. The blaze, which they call the buckweed fire, started in the early afternoon of October 21st in a rural community in the northern part of Los Angeles County. It was fueled by high winds and hot, dry weather, and it spread so quickly. It drove out 15,000 people from their homes and destroyed 21 houses and 22 other buildings. It injured three people and blackened more than 38,000 acres from one single match that even a child could light came devastation. See, the Bible tells us that there are also different ways that fires are started, and they may not be what we think fires are. To us, fire can burn things. It turns things to ash, and it consumes those things. Although the Bible says God is a consuming fire, it also says that there are many different types of fire that does not consume and burn to ash. We read one about Moses. At one time, the women at the tomb ran and told the disciples that there were two men in shining clothes who spoke to them and reminded them of what Jesus told his disciples when he was with them. Two of Jesus' disciples talked and walked to a village called Emmaus, which was 6.89 miles from Jerusalem. That's how far they walked, to Emmaus. And as they talked together, they tried to figure out what had just happened. See, Jesus was just crucified. He died. Yeah. The man that they followed died. 
And as they're walking, Jesus himself came near and he walked with them. He was just like, hey, what's going on? What, you, what, what are you talking about? What's going on here? And after Jesus' resurrection, he showed himself in these different places, which was one, the road to Emmaus. Luke 24, 16 says, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. See, they were so focused on the fact that this man they were following, this man who was doing miracles, this man who was doing all these things that no one else could do, just died. He died. That was it. There was nothing. He just died. So they were trying to figure out what happened so intently that they didn't even recognize him. He was right there walking with him, with them. And uh, verse 17 says, And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another? What are you talking about? And you're walking and you're sad. And they continued to tell Jesus of all that had happened with the crucifixion. They were second guessing. Is he really the Messiah? He died. He's dead. We're going to bury him. Did he really die? And when they reached the village, the disciples, they compelled or strongly encouraged him to stay with them because it was late. And he went in and he stayed. Verse 30, and it came to pass as he sat with, at meat with them, he was eating, he took bread and blessed it, and he broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight they they supped with him they were sitting with him verse 32 and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures didn't our heart burn within us Burn here means to kindle, to be set on fire or consumed with. And this is what God wants in every heart that he brings to him. If we're on fire and consumed with God, we are going to have that intimate relationship that he desires with us. See, they had Jesus with them. They had him talking with, with them, yes. which brought a stirring or a passion in their hearts. Here it is, only three days since the crucifixion happened, and they were already discouraged until he opened their eyes. It's been over 2,000 for us until he opened our eyes we were discouraged that's why he has come to be in us to live in us so we can have faith which is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and for him to use us to grow his kingdom right. so one way the bible talks about Fire not being a fire that consumes and burns to ashes is fire was made as an offering. And there were sacrifices made by fire before the Lord. That's in Numbers. And it was used for incense to go up before the Lord. Fire was. It was used for incense. Aaron's two sons, Nadab and Abihu, died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. Fire can be present and not burn or consume also. See, the Lord spoke out of the mist of the fire to Moses and to the people because the, the mountain was on fire. Moses stretched his rod toward heaven in front of Pharaoh and after the, after the Lord sent thunder and hail because the fire ran, and the fire ran along the ground. Exodus 9, 24. 
So, so it says, so there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Fire was mingled with the hail. Exodus 3, 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And the Lord came by night as a pillar of fire for light. Exodus 13, 18. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. They went out of Egypt like able body soldiers in sync. Did you hear that? They didn't just run, they didn't run for their lives during the Exodus. They didn't, they weren't like, oh, we have to leave Egypt quickly. We've got to get out of here. Hurry, 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 hurry. Like you always see people who are leaving different countries. It says that they went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. That means they walked in tandem like soldiers who were ready to fight. Verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Verse 22. And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. It also says that God descended or came down upon Mount Sinai in fire. There are also fires that don't physically consume, but may consume in other ways. James 3.3 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Wherever the governor listeth, wherever you want it to go, it will move if you move it. Verse 5, even so, the tongue is a little member. It boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets it on fire, the course sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 7, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and things of the sea in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? And actually, Pastor saw a fig tree in life. She ate from it. I did. In France. And so did that, did that, did that, um, did that vine have figs? Figs on, a vine didn't have figs on it, no, right? It's a, it's a, it was a tree. Tree. It's a tree, exactly. So a vine does not produce figs. That's what it's saying. And so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. And if you look, if you research it online, you can actually see where the saltwater sea and the freshwater river meets together, and it does not mix. <laughs> It divides. It divides. Exactly. God did that. 
So many years ago, I had a dream, and in the dream, someone in our church was outside, and they were setting little fires in the woods by the trees, and I was in the house working. I went outside in the dream, and I saw off in the distance behind some trees these little fires all over the place. And I was trying to figure out how to stop those fires. We didn't know that the person was going in our church. He was going from, and he was in my dream. He was going from person to person to person and venting to each one. And he actually caused a huge church split in our church. And although it didn't physically burn us, it caused much devastation in our lives and in the lives of other people. Many made decisions that they wish that they never would have made. And they wouldn't have had to make those decisions if that little fire that they had listened to didn't consume them. Right. Right. They wouldn't have had to make that decision. Wow. Right. That's how church splits always start. Truth comes to source. Wow. Our faith or our walk can be likened to a fire. How would you describe your life if it was a fire? Would it be smoldering and smoke? Or would it have deep embers and a blazing fire? Or are you somewhere in between? Even though one match can start a fire, Typically, a fire takes time and preparation when we build it, right? A campfire, a bonfire, we, you know, the, this, this author, he was talking about the fire basics. You need dry ground, you need the right materials like wood, paper, you need the right conditions. You need dry sticks for kindling. You need a passageway for oxygen to flow through. And finally, you need to place small branches and logs and pieces of wood on top of the kindling, and then you light the papers. Once the papers are lit, the fire will begin to burn. And within moments, the twigs will burn. And then in minutes, the twigs begin to have synergy, and they burn together. The fire has to be fed regularly. And if you don't put wood on the fire, what happens, Brother Michael? It dies. Right, and if you don't put wood on the fire until next week, <laughs> it's still dead. It's still dead. <laughs> and what if you put fire on it every two or three days? It's still dead. Yeah, what about every other day? It's still dead if you haven't fed it. That's right. So if the fire is built properly, then the life of the fire will be sustained. If not, then it won't burn. After the fire has burned an extended time, you'll start noticing a couple of things. You'll begin to see ashes. And although they are hot, they don't really contribute to the present fire. You'll also start seeing what they call embers. Embers are very hot. They are what provide life to the fire. Yeah. My niece, she was three years old. They were at a campsite, and she's now 13. And um, she was upset with her brother, and they were fighting, of course. She was three. And <laughs> she didn't like the things he was doing. He didn't like the things she was doing, so she got mad. And they were getting ready to leave the campsite, and they thought the fire was out because, you know, there was smoke rising in it, and it was just white, and that was it. Well, she, Gracie, she decides that she's going to get mad at her brother, and she starts stomping backwards. And as she stomps backwards, she hit the metal ring of the fire pit, and she fell into the fire, which was not a fire, which was not ashes, which was embers. If she, they didn't get her out within one more minute, she would have died, because her her spinal cord was almost severed. So that's how hot and that's how deceiving. See, the ashes look like you still have, may have something, but it's almost out probably. Right. 
How many times did you pour water on ashes and it Right. Embers are pieces of wood at the base of the fire that have not all burnt up, and they provide life to the fire. They may glow red or orange depending on the temperature, and embers are very hot. The deeper the embers, the greater the fire. If your fire begins to go out, you may be tempted to just throw something on it quick and just keep going. Like I said, pour the water, you know, the fire will quickly burn bright if you put some something small on it, like an egg carton or you know some kind of paper, milk carton. It will burn bright because it provides a quick burn. And how do we get it to keep burning? We have to put good dry wood or dry materials. And the base of the foundation of the embers have to be built up enough that it will sustain the fire. It sounds like a lot of work just to build a fire. Or you could just take a match and go and hope it burns. No, my cousin did that. <laughs> Blew up in her face and burned her whole face. Yeah, that's not a good thing to do. But you can light the match, throw it, and just hope it burns. And you won't have to do all that work. Right? Or you throw the match in there. Yeah. Throw the match in there and it will go out. You won't have to do any work, though. And it won't be, you won't have a fire. But if our lives and walk with Jesus can be likened to a fire, then you should ask yourselves a few questions. What is your fire? And are your materials right for your fire to burn? Your materials are your life. And that life has been given to you by the Lord, remember? Right. You laid that life down before him and surrendered it to Amen. him. That's true. That's true. The Lord Jesus Christ was speaking through John to the Laodicean church at the time, which is in Revelation 3. But it gives us a good look into the things that he does not like. Did I give? No. Revelation 3, 15 and 16 says, I know thy works, or thy, thy, your toil, your labor, your deeds, that you are neither cold, chilly, nor hot, boiled, or fervent. Hot also means passionate, enthusiastic, eager, zealous, fanatic, fanatical, vehement, intensely heated and burning. I would that you might be or could be or should be cold or hot. I don't want you to be lukewarm, right? So then because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. See, either we don't like the fire Either we light the fire and make it a good one, or we don't light the fire and we take a match and just throw it, hoping that that fire will go and ignite itself. See, God doesn't like that. If we are hot, we are going to light that fire. We are gonna do what it takes to work that fire. If we're cold, we're just not gonna do anything. The conditions for a fire have to be just right to burn, just like the conditions of our life must be just right for us to burn bright with the greatest intensity that we have for the Lord. Let me ask you this. Are your leaves or your twigs wet in your life? What about the branches or the paper? What about the wood in your life? Is it wet? How's your daily Bible reading? How's your prayer life? We're to be praying throughout the day, talking to the Lord. 
because he's supposed to be the center of our life. He loves it when we talk to him, when we acknowledge him, when he is the center of our life. See, he is the fuel that will ignite that fire in us. Amen. In our spiritual disciplines or our deep embers help keep the fire burning. Amen. With it, Without it, our light grows dim and eventually will go out. The ashes that fall to the sides are the past spiritual experiences of your life. The burns, the, the little trees, the fires that we went through, those are the ashes in our life. They are good for a quick burn, but not good enough to last for an extended length of time. And though it was meaningful for the moment, you can't sustain on just one conference. Girls, you're going to a conference this week, but that's not all God has for you. He has more. Use seasoned wood, the good wood. Make those embers burn brightly by spending time in the Lord's presence. We want to keep that fire burning. Amen. Well, think about this, right? Be, someone being unteachable or proud or full of arrogance is like pouring heavy, wet sand on the fire. And before you know it, it goes right out, right? And it smolders out. And it's harder to start a new fire under a pile of sand. I'm sure it can be done somehow, some way, but it, you'd have to start over again. Yes, exactly. And just like the word says that it is almost impossible to restore someone who has tasted of the Holy Ghost and walked away. So dump the sand and reach for the wood. Your fire has to keep burning. And if there's just a little flame, a little spark, well, guess what? It's not too late. It's not too late. And like Sister Ronnie said, even if we dump wet sand on our life, it's not too late to start over again. Because you still have breath in your lungs. Amen. Yeah. All right, so get that wood, get that good material, and let's keep it burning. And I know God's speaking. I know he is. I know he's touching lives. Yeah. He's transforming your life right now, just sitting there. He's transforming you. Yeah. Let him. Yeah. Don't walk out the door the same way you came in. Don't have that same mindset because you don't need it. Let it go. Just like Paul shook that viper off his hand. He shook it off when it latched onto his hand and shook it into the fire. He's like, uh-uh, nope. And he didn't die and it was poisonous. If you walk out the door the same way you walked in, you're allowing that viper to have its way with you and it puts poison into your system. So let's keep the fire burning and let's get deeper with the Lord, amen? Yes. Amen, let's have an altar call here. Let's, let's come up to the altar and let's really seek God on this because I know some of you are just not where you're at right now. It's not that you're totally lost, but you're not where you're at. And if you want your life to change, you have to do something about it. You can't just